Hello and welcome to our first member pioneer um, social media YouTube live demonstration on how to get started on Twitter. I know from talking to many of you at our member pioneer workshops that Twitter was something that you all really needed a bit of extra help with. So I've come up with, from listening to you and from going through your post-it notes, a range of questions that we're going to cover today and we're going to start from scratch. We're just going to wait for a few more people to join. Um, I know we're a couple of minutes early coming on, which is absolutely fine. Um, so this is Karen. Karen works in our community team and she's going to come along and set up a social media profile from scratch. So in the next minute or so, we're going to get started with that. So Karen, what's your role in the community team at the moment? So I just joined uh, Mark. I just joined uh, the co-op um, a few weeks ago. So I've only just started as a community support coordinator, um, and um, my role is to help the member pioneers who are um, at the moment going through the welcome days and doing all that side of the um, getting them on board. Fab, cool. Right. So I'm going to turn the screen around now, and I'm going to share our screen. And me and Karen are going to go through and set up uh, so Twitter social media profile for you guys. And then we're going to go through um, a range of the different questions that you've asked. Um, and then if you have any questions to ask, you can write them in the comments box and we will answer as many of them as possible. If we don't have a chance to answer it today, I will write to you and we will address your comments there. Cool. So the first thing that you need to do, Karen, is click on to the sign up button. Okay. Great. And then if you just put your details in there. Okay. Reaching across the screen now. <laughs> Oops. Could help if I could type my eye. Okay. Which one would you so like I'll to use? So I'll just put your email address in there. For work. Yeah. Um, you just pop your weight one in. You can use a contact number and that will also help with your um, security of the account as well. Um, so it's up to you whether you use an email address or your contact number. Okay. Whilst Karen's doing this, Twitter's a very easy way to get conversation content out there quickly. Um, I know that Actually, maybe skip that one, so if you just click on save. I know that many of you are already using Facebook and Twitter already, and this platform is really ideal to get a message out quickly to your followers, and by the end of this session, we will have gone through and we will have talked about how to connect with your communities on Twitter, so the messages that you're sending out will be relevant to them people. Okay. So, contact number. I can put them in. That's fine. Sure. Okay, yeah. I think it's going to send us a verification code, isn't it? So. Cool. Okay, let's see if that comes through. So that's going to send a very verification code to your mobile phone. Um, oh. It's actually, it's actually me. ringing. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's great. Wow. So uh, a great American there just told me my confirmation number, and I put that in and submit. Fab. So when we're choosing our username, it's really important that we use a name that's true to ourselves. Um, we would ask you to use your first name or surname or just your first name um, and make it relevant to you. So we don't want to necessarily have the word co-op in there because we've got a bio which we're going to populate further on um, very shortly, which will be able to tell everyone exactly who you are and what you're here to do. So if you're not a community pioneer, you can put a range of different things in. So we'll be able to give you some examples as we go on. So if you want to just have a look for a Twitter handle, a Twitter name, that would be unique for you there, Karen. Okay. I know you've already got a social media account, but you, you are quite new to this. So yes. it's quite good. So I'd um, like one which is more related to co-op. So I'll put something in with co-op in there. So we would 
as we've already said, we would just like to use our own oh, name. So, so sorry, if own name. Just, yeah, yeah, sorry. So if I, oh, actually, so I pick one of the ones here at the bottom. Actually, there's some good suggestions here. So let's go with that one. Cool. Okay. So it also does suggest them underneath. So if you wanted to use one of them, that's absolutely fine as well. Okay, we'll go with that one. Cool. So oh, okay. let's go. So click on let's go. that one. And then it will ask um, for a range of things that you're interested in. So I'm not too sure if there is a community one there. So is it, are you interested in any of them, Karen? So we can search so for topics. So we can search in there. So. Okay. Community. Okay. Fab. And then continue. And charity might be another one that you're interested mm -hmm. in as well. Yeah. So whilst we're doing this, we're just thinking of words that um, will pull up things that you might be interested in. So you can put as many of them in there as you want. So we think of a few more to put in, just to, so then when the profile is there, it'll give us some more suggestions. Um, so looking for even more. So what else is a, a community pioneer, someone involved in the community, can we think of? Um, so it could be schools, is that an option? Because it could be working with your local school to help them with school dinners and that kind of thing, um, healthy start. Let's see what we get. School. Okay. It's just there. What else is out there? So you can look for scouts as well. Yeah. Um, how about something like uh, fundraising? Fundraising, that's another really good one. Hashtag fundraising, cool. Right, so we'll leave it at full for now, but this will help you obviously connect with the right people in your community mm -hmm. as we go on and give content that is relevant to yourselves. So you can also put some personal ones in because from this account, you know, I want to see that you guys are all people and um, personality is really important. So you can mix this up a bit, talk about your own life as well as your role as a community pioneer because people are really interested in getting to know a person as well. So if you want to just click on continue and then okay. it'll take us through to the next stage. Cool. So, I, want to find, I think you can, yeah, just some of these options you can um, yeah. refuse to give the information, which is also fine. Yeah, so on this occasion I'll do no thanks, but I could I could link in to find out who else yeah. is on Twitter. Okay. So that's selecting it. Does it have nothing about it? So then it's going to give you a range of different things from the search um, words that you've put in, which are all community. So we can follow all of these people. So it'll give you an option here to follow all 39, or there's a select all box which you can unselect, yeah. and then it will unselect them all, and then you can just go down and choose the ones that you're interested in yourself. So we can just follow them ones for now. Okay. So we're going to follow them 35 because there's them charity ones there as well. So I would probably want to turn on notifications, but on this this time I won't just because I've set it up with my no problem. Phone that's fine. Two accounts. Yeah. So not not now. Here we go. So the profile itself looks like this. Um, Twitter here giving us a warm welcome. So it'll give you a range of messages. Um, it's important that you just read through them because there's some really handy um, hints and tips here. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about Twitter is they do give you a lot of the information. So by the end of this, Karen, and you guys that are watching, I can actually show you where you can go and find this information. Um, it's just quicker for you to click on a link rather than watching through this video to see what we've done today. Okay, cool. So as we were saying earlier, Karen, um, mm -hmm. it's important that we are a person. As soon as we put um, a co-op logo on that account or something that isn't a person in that profile picture, it almost builds a wall in between you and someone else um, and it makes them harder to connect with you. 
And I think it's really useful. I know for a fact on my own profile that people recognize me in One Angel Square and um, when I'm out in the field, whether it's talking to my colleagues in funeral care, in our funeral homes, they're like, oh, Scott Bennett, and I recognize your face there. So it's really handy to have that, that resemblance there so it, re it represents you as a person. So Karen, if you can click on the, the picture, the, the camera, mm -hmm. and then upload a picture. We've got a lovely picture of you that we found earlier <laughs> in our desktop. So it's just the one there. This one? Yeah, that one. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then it's Yay. worked. There we go. And then we can do the same again. I found some palm trees because you look like you were on holiday. Yes, yes, so I was. So yeah. we can upload them for you as well. So it's really starting to show that it, it's you and that you're a real person, which is what this is all about. So, position and scale, so looking great. And then the next things that we need to think about is our bio. So this is gonna tell people in a snippet about yourself, Karen. Okay. So obviously you work for Apco UK, so it could be that you wanna tell people where you work and what your role is here. Okay. But I think for today, we should maybe do an example of um, a community um, member pioneer um, role. Right. So it might be worth you typing in something to do with the role. So you could say, no, I'm I, Karen. So I could say, um, I'm a uh, pioneer. Yeah, if I want, yeah, exactly. Um, and then I could say for for UK. Okay. Just put an at sign. Uh, so the yes. at handle will mean um, that the account belongs to someone. So you'll see it's gone blue there. So if someone clicks on that because they're interested in at Co-op UK, it will then take them through and okay. it will take them to our profile so they can find out more about who you work for as well, which is always handy. Yeah, that's good too. Um, what are your hobbies, Karen? What kind of things are you interested in? Um, I love traveling, uh, reading, um, and um, going to the cinema. Cool, so you could say, obviously you've already said that you're a community member, pioneer, and co-op UK, and you love reading books. Okay. Oh. Fab. So it's also really handy to put your location in there because when people search in the area where you are, mm -hmm. um, you will pop up. So it could be other local causes or the local schools looking for people in the area which are, are really interested into, into connecting with you. Okay. So it could be that you could be quite broad and write Manchester, England, yeah. or you could write Salford if you live in Salford or whichever one you want. So right. it's up to you if you want to put your more closer home place or you I can think, make it up for this one yeah i'll go for manchester cool yeah okay cool and then do you have a website do you do any blogging or, blogging <laughs> or anything like that? um no i don't unfortunately cool. so if you if you do blog or you do have a website of your own you can always put um that information in there if you wanted to put your a link to your um facebook profile so people can find you there it depends how open you're going to be on um, with your social media channels mm -hmm. it's not one size fits all and i think that's something that we all need to remember that for myself, I would mainly use um, Twitter for my co-op life. So I will talk about everything co-op on there. My followers are more interested in me talking co-op. My friends call me Mr. Co-op because <laughs> when I was talking too much on Facebook, they're like, you're constantly talking about the co-op. <laughs> and you know, it, it does get to the point where people will unfollow you and it, that is sort of how we end up getting our audience built up. So on my Twitter profile, I used to have quite a lot of my friends following me. And then because I was talking about the community work and the various things I was doing in, in my job, um, some of my followers dropped off and then I gained other people that are really interested in the co-op and other people that are interested in digital and that kind of thing. So don't worry if you do lose followers, you just need to get the right followers for you and it's not about having thousands and thousands of followers, it's about having the ones that are engaged with you and your community and I think that's really important. Yes. So if you wanted to put your birthday in there, you can do. I think Twitter sends you some balloons 
pictures and things <laughs> on your birthday and your profile. But if you want to leave that for now, it's up to you. I'll leave that for now. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's starting to really look like you now and really sort of tell a story about yourself. So we're going to go through um, setting some tweets up and talking about some of the functions on Twitter. Um, so tweets here, but I wouldn't recommend always using them, you know, no. as a newbie. Um, I think what I've been talking to men pioneers about and also with the colleagues in the co-op is you need to go at your own, own pace with this. Yes. It's absolutely okay to just follow people and observe. I think there's nothing worse than feeling like you need to rush and you need to always retweet everything, when sometimes it's actually good to, to see what's going on, yeah. see how the land lies out there, and then get to know your community before you um, feel more confident reaching out um, and obviously making them connections. Exactly, so I don't need to have done a tweet, do I, to be able to go and look at everybody else's, so it's not no. a prerequisite. No. I just at my own pace. Yeah, no, that's absolutely correct. So in the top here, we're going to follow some of um, our colleagues right. and we're going to send them some tweets now. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to look, if we look here. So I need to put the at in first, yeah. So we use the at handle and that will help you search for things. So as soon as you start looking, it will bring people up, which um, it will give you a range of people. Okay. Um, I'm just going to look for... And what does it mean if somebody has a little blue tick next to their name? So if, there, if it's a blue tick on their profile, that means that they're verified. So often it will show you the people that are verified. So that could be a famous singer, it could be a chef, it could be Nigella, it could be mm -hmm. anyone. So it could be your um, MP in your uh, parliament, local to you. So there's loads of people out there that do have verified blue ticks. Um, Corp UK's um, Twitter profile that's also got a blue tick yeah. um, and I think you can apply to Twitter if you wanted a blue tick to verify your profile but <laughs> right. I think at the moment we just need to focus on getting it right. Exactly so I don't need to have it. one of those, don't I don't need, need to, to worry about I don't have one. No, okay. not at all. So, so we're going to look for Jordan. Jordan. So it's not giving me any results. Have I put an N there? Yeah. I think. So just looking for people now on our profile. Yes. Um, and then we can start tweeting people and reaching out in the comfort that will um, hopefully get some tweets back if they're not too busy. Jordan J. There he is. So okay. we've searched for him. We can see his profile here. Right. Um, and then we can follow him just there. Okay. So what does it mean if I follow him now then? So if you follow him, all of his, you will, you won't get notifications unless you choose to get notifications for that person. Right. Um, but when you look on your profile here, so view your profile, and you go to home up here, content that is more relevant to you will pop up. So when Jordan tweets, yeah. the tweets will pop up here. Um, so what we can do, we can see what Jordan has been doing. So he's been talking about a men's health magazine, um, and if you wanted to tweet Jordan um, and reach out to him, you would do that by clicking there. You've got 140 characters for a tweet, and um, it used to be the same for direct messages as well, but now for a direct message, which is private, you've got as many characters as you want. So that's really helpful if you wanted to go, go back with a more detailed response. That's something else we're going to talk about shortly. Okay. So, if we wanted to, what do you think we should say to Jordan? So in this example, I'm going to tweet him directly, Yeah. but other people will be able to so view it. So if you tweet Jordan yeah. using his first one, mm -hmm. it would go directly to Jordan. If people look on your profile, they can see that you've tweeted Jordan. Yeah. Um, but in a moment, I can show you how to mention Jordan. Okay. So if you just want to say to Jordan, hi Jordan, we've just set up a new um, Twitter account. Mm -hmm. 
and then just pop the gap in between there. Oh, okay. Oh, even corrects my spelling. That's amazing. Which is really ideal. Um, <laughs> I think that's the Grammarly on my computer. But yeah. that's another, another program. Um, and then we can just put a little smiley face there. Yeah. And then we can tweet Jordan. Okay. So that's gone over to our Jordan. And he will then get that tweet. So if we go back to your profile, your tweets, notifications. Hello, dear. So already you can wow. see here that you've um, you've got Dorothy um, following you and you've got Jordan. Um, and then Jordan has liked your tweet already. Brilliant. Because Jordan's Jordan's on it there. So yeah. <laughs> let's click on it. So nice one, Karen. Welcome to the Twitter sphere. Okay. Fab. So we we can see there that the message has gone to you and Jordan, but it's in the public. So if you wanted Dorothy and Jordan to see your tweet, yeah. you could reply going or we'll do another one. So we can do another tweet in your profile. Tweet up there. Okay. So then if you go, hi, right. and then space, at Jordan, and then you can see his name is already populated because That's Twitter's really cool. recognized that you've already spoken to this person. Okay. Um, hi, at Jordan McDowell. Um, Thanks for coming back to me. Really looking forward to working with you or something like that okay. in the community. Tweet that. Okay. Good old smiley face. It's always important to put a smiley face in. Absolutely. So you can see that Dorothy, if you're if you're watching, you should have been you should be able to see that tweet on your, your feed now. Um, and also Jordan will have got that. So that will go to all of your followers. So yeah. that is where we're up to with that one. Okay. Um, I'm just thinking the next one. Just going to go through our plan of action. Just bear with me one moment. So we've got a profile picture. We've got the header. Um, how to tag people. So tagging people. Cool. So if we wanted to post a picture of then palm trees that you've got as your profile picture, mm -hmm. if you can just click on the camera icon. So if you wanted to attach a picture, that's the icon for you at the end. And then select your screen um, of palm trees. You can add that to your tweet. Oh, great. And then you can write something like, lovely, palm trees or something like that. Okay. And then, oh, that's just another gap, yep. And then you could um, say, picture taken. With Jordan. <laughs> Jordan we've to... got it in for you today. <laughs> can so, I uh, put him in as the. So, would, if... so we're going to talk about the tagging. So okay. you can have more characters um, through not always using people's Twitter handles. And then underneath, there's a, a button with a little picture of a person who says, Who's in this picture? Oh, yeah, okay. So if you click on that one, Karen, it will then give you an option. It might not pop up straight away oh, yeah, um, due to it um, being a tag rather than um, at handling Jordan. So then Jordan will be tagged into there. Oh, I think I clicked off it again, sorry. Let's see if that makes it complete faster now. I did not correctly. There he is. Cool. So we're going to add him to that picture. 
I'm sure it's just tagged in using this picture. So now yeah, you can see that Jordan's name Brilliant. appeared there. So that's really handy if you've got a tweet and you want to mention people in your area that will also be interested in that. So it could be that other uh, member pioneers in your local community that are close to you that may also sort of maybe overreach into um, the same community that you're working in, um, you could maybe tag them in at the bottom like this. You can tag, um, I think, you can tag the people in there and then you can tweet that. So the picture then appears there. Jordan's tagged in, mm -hmm. so then Jordan can see that the picture's there and that's how you would tag someone into a profile um, status. So we've tagged people in, how to tweet people, we've done that. We've mentioned Jordan in a tweet, so, um, so your other followers can see that as well, mm -hmm. which is also great. Um, I just wanted to talk to you about having an existing Twitter account because I know some of you, you shared concerns about not wanting your private life being on your um, member pioneer Twitter account, which is absolutely fine. So what you can do, you can either set up a new account on Twitter using your name like we have done for Karen today, or you can just use the account that you've um, got already. Um, and it, it doesn't matter at all if there's history in there. So if you've been tweeting about your holidays and various other things, that's absolutely fine to have that information and that history there on your account. As I was saying earlier, it's important that you guys show your personality and show that you're a human being as well. So that's something that I'm really keen that you can try and sort of mix and match a bit, talk about your member pioneer outreach and the great work you're doing in the community, but it's also good to show um, maybe that you're having a glass of wine with your chimney in the back garden on a Friday night because, you know, as human beings, that's the kind of thing that we um, can resonate with and connect with. So um, let me just see what else we've got here because I'm just going through some of the questions that you've already asked. So we were also asked, when should we tweet? And I know some of you were talking about having um, a tweet deck um, and that's a place where you can schedule tweets. So you could schedule them all on a Sunday afternoon. It would take you 20 minutes, half an hour, um, and then you put them out. I think the, the recommendation from myself is it's always great to get it in the moment. It's always good to get that content out there as it matters and as it's happening. Um, I think it's always good if you're at an event that you share that information there and then on your on your mobile phone device. Because um, subjects pass quite quickly and sometimes you can take the pictures and think, I'm gonna do that later, I'm gonna go home and have a brew, and then you forget and then it's not relevant um, the following day or the following week. Yeah. So I think if you were to tweet um, your outreach information, it would always be good to um, have it going out there and then. Yeah. So my recommendation there would be tweet in the moment. The content is more relevant at that time. So that is our advice for that one. Um, and it's also really important that if you are tweeting, that you make sure that you're available as much as possible to actually respond to the tweets as well. Because there's nothing worse than um, tweeting someone and not getting a response. Yeah. Um, and it's sort of people may lose faith in you if you don't always go back straight away and have the conversation. And if you go back three days later, they quite often forgot what they've actually tweeted you. So it's important to sort of try and be as reactive as possible with these people, mm -hmm. which is great. So we're also gonna look at some other bits that we've been asked about, and one of them is retweets and okay. quote retweets. So I'm gonna send you a tweet. Excellent, okay. Myself, on okay. my mobile device. <laughs> I won't be one moment. So, that. Hmm. 
I won't be one moment, I'm just typing the Twitter handle in now. Yeah, so my Twitter handle is Karen Hardy 14 So you're just there, lovely smiley face picture, <laughs> easy to recognise, greatly <laughs> everlasting impression. Oh, yeah. So, Okay, I'm not going to look at your phone because I'm. I want it to be a surprise. But you're going to tweet me. So it's on its way to you now. Okay. So then you'll get a notification. You've got mm -hmm. quite a few notifications. I have got quite you a have. few. I wonder yeah. what's been going on. Oh. Let's have a little look. So. We've now, oh. <laughs> we've now got some extra followers. Right. You've got Gail following you. You've got Dorothy right. from earlier. Jordan's yeah. following you. Sarah's following you. Oh yeah, yeah. Are these all people that you know? Um, I do know Sarah. Yes. Fab. You know some <laughs> of them. I know Gail. Hello, Gail. Cool. So I've just tweeted you here, and it is great <laughs> to see that you've you've joined us on Twitter. So, if you wanted to share that message with people. Mm -hmm. You could either click there, yeah, if you okay, want, and then that will retweet it to your followers, okay. So, Gail so, and Dorothy and Jordan will so see do, that. So, do I have to add a comment at this point? So, what we're going to do, we're just going to do a basic retweet, yeah, and then we're going to do a quote retweet. Right. So, I can show you how to do that one next. So, this one, so if you just click on the retweet, retweet? one, okay, that would be marvelous. So then you'll have retweeted that one. You can see there that it's now highlighted in green, yeah. which is always good to see, just to, to see whether you've already seen it or not. Um, there's other buttons on there which we'll come <laughs> to. Eager Beaver, uh, fabulous. Okay. Right, so then Jordan said here that your picture is gorgeous. Oh. Jordan probably wishes he was on that beach now. <laughs> so, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on retweet. Mm -hmm. But then in here, you can write a message to do a quote. So it could be, I know it's gorgeous, right? Or something like that, if you wanted to. Or I completely agree with Jordan. This is great. Whatever you like, really. <laughs> so then if you click on tweet, okay. that will go out. And if you come off that, and then if you go onto your profile, and view profile, you've now got um, a quote retweet here at the top, yeah. which has the comments. You've got a retweet here, which we've done, which doesn't have any comments. It's because it's mainly because you, you know, Scott's hit the nail on the head. It is great to see you on Twitter. You've not really needed to add <laughs> anything more onto that. Um, so we can see that you can add your comments onto someone else's, which is always really handy sometimes if you feel like there's something else that you need to add in there. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. So we've done that. Um, we've got this one here earlier on that I sent you that says, great to see you on Twitter. If you want to like something, you can like it here. When you, the difference is, I'll just click off the like, you can unlike things as well and you can unretweet things. Okay. Um, once you've retweeted it, um, it will go out to everyone. Um, so it's more like the message, you, you, you're really sharing that message. But yeah. sometimes, some, some, you really just like something, it doesn't necessarily, it's not always worthy of a retweet. But <laughs> yeah. sometimes something's really great and you think, I'm going to like that one and I'm going to retweet it yeah. because I really agree and um, I really want to share that message and show my support. Okay. So that's why we do that. Um, and when you say when a retweet it goes out to everybody, you mean my eight followers? Your eight followers eight will have followers. seen that. So they're and already in the last... Um, few moments we've sent five tweets from your account so it, it looks like you're going to be a prolific tweeter here it does. Um, if you wanted to go back to myself to say thanks very much there's a reply button there which you can click on and then you can just say thanks Scott or cheers Scott or whatever you like okay cool and then you can just click on reply and that's how you reply to a message on there a lot of this information can also be found on in the Twitter um, how to FAQ guide. Um, I think that can be located. Let me just find it for you now. So there's a help center here. So here, 
a lot of the information that we're sharing with you today can be found in this um, inclusive Twitter um, support guide. Um, they are the heroes of, of Twitter. They know their channel the best. So, you know, if you ever are stuck at something and um, to find something, you can either watch our video back or you can go into the Twitter support guide here and um, just search quite um, easily something. So the next thing we're going to go up to is hashtags. So if you wanted to look at hashtags, pop that in there and then it will give you a range of different questions about hashtags. Right. So that's probably something that you might find useful, Karen. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we're going to talk about hashtags. So we're going to go back to Twitter and we're going to look at hashtags. So let's start another tweet. So okay. hashtags. Hashtags are used to join in the conversation and um, to look at what other people are saying about the conversation. Um, it's also categorizing tweets um, and it helps people to search more easily. So before we do a tweet with a hashtag in, up here, we can look for hashtags. We've got a few hashtags that we use quite a lot in the co-op. So if you could just look for hashtag being co-op. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm on an Apple, so... No it's, problem. So it's... <laughs> it's control. I'm throwing it. Right. <laughs> so, Alton, Thank you. There you go. No problem at all. They're all different. <laughs> so being co-op, we can look for. And then at the top, if we just select that one. Okay. So we can see what the whole story is at the moment of being co op. And if we click on latest, the, the top one, sorry, will show you the, the top tweets. Um, and they're the ones that have the most engagement normally. So they will pop up at the top. If you click on latest, though, um, that will show you what the latest thing is that people have said. So the latest thing from an hour ago was from Ken. Um, and he tweeted um, about. Um, co-op local community fund in the North Lancashire voluntary sector. So that's quite interesting. That might be something that you're interested in. Yeah. Um, so you can like that. You can retweet it if you wanted to. Um, but right now we're just looking at um, the use of hashtags. So you can see that our colleagues um, and you member pioneers, which will be using this um, hashtag because it's one that a lot of our communities are interested in and local causes, as well as another one which we'll talk about in a moment, um, use on a frequent basis. So Catherine was um, at the um, LinkedIn Awards, as we were the 13th most um, happy employer. So they went and got that reward with our um, HR colleagues. Mm -hmm. So you can see Jackson there ironing his um, Blackpool Pride t-shirts for this weekend. He's being co-op. He didn't want to give people creased t-shirts for his sins, so he's ironed 120 t-shirts. So it's really good because it tells a story of um, what people are doing. There's some more community outreach work there from Ken. Um, talking about the 100% British message, which is really co-op, which is great. Um, and you can just explore that for yourself in your own time and you can really connect with our colleagues and find people in your communities that we need to work with and connect. So if you can just have a search, Karen, for the, the co-op way hashtag and okay. you can see what's going on in that one. So it's really good because it, it tells more of a story um, and you can see all of the, the same kind of information in the same place. The co-op way, there you go. When you do a tweet, you can include the hashtag at any point in the tweet. It doesn't need to be at the beginning. It doesn't need to be at the end. It could be in the middle, two thirds of the way through, mm -hmm. wherever you like. So when you tweet someone, as I say, if, if you're just tweeting the one person, it would go at the beginning. If you were just reaching out to, to all of your followers, you don't necessarily need to put um, a Twitter handle in there at all, like this Co-op Foundation tweet that went out. So they've just tweeted that out to all of their followers. We can see again that when you click on the latest one, thanks Karen, um, we can see that the latest tweets are coming in um, mm -hmm. using the co-op way. So the co-op way, we would tend to use that for things that are very different um, that the co-op are doing that other retailers aren't necessarily doing. So our member pioneers is exclusive to the co-op. Mm -hmm. You guys are the only ones out there um, in our supermarket. It's called member pioneers. You are co-op, you're doing the right thing, you're in our communities and you're really engaging. Um, 
we would use, we would use the co-op way for things that you're doing there. And you could also use two hashtags. It doesn't necessarily need to be one hashtag. So if you wanted to reach more people, um, we know that last year our Bean Co-op hashtag had a reach of over 70 million people. No. So it's been used quite a lot of times, but then mm -hmm. when you add up all of the followers for all of the accounts, it will then be a bigger reach and that's the potential reach for, for that hashtag, which is it's quite a big number. It's a massive um, number, yeah. So for me, I'd recommend that you would use a hashtag that is already established. There's no point in reinventing something that, from scratch. Um, the chances are not as many people will have searched for it. Mm -hmm. You could also use hashtags local to yourself. For instance, if you lived in Monton in Salford, you could use hashtag Monton. So if you want to just put hashtag Monton in there. Monton. Yeah. I've never been. How to spell it? T O N. T O N. So Monton. Oh and yes. Select that one at the top. You can see what's going on in Monton. Um, you don't necessarily need to use a hashtag when you're looking for community work. So Salford oh, Snaps. Nice. Um, beautiful picture of. I think that's a bridge there. My eyesight's really <laughs> not that great. Yeah. But as I say, Monton's in Salford. It's like a little village there. So it's really great that this person here as you Salford because Salford's bigger than Monton so it's all in the same area yeah but there and, are ways of, of communicating and, and by putting one in it's it's almost like somebody suggested another option for you you might not well, you might have it just shows that, hashtag, that, that yeah both hashtags are very relevant but, for that yeah. area so it's important to get that and um, Salford Council's using Monton and um, so you can see the, the bees there on the side of that building be Strong Together Manchester's using that, so that could be someone that you might want to um, link with if your community outreach work is in Monton, in Salford. Um, so all of this stuff here, that looks tasty from the blind pig. <laughs> so you can see, you know, it might be that you want to connect with the blind pig because you feel that you could do some a coffee morning there, and um, because I know that they do very nice flat whites. So it could be that you could arrange to meet up with your community in the blind pig and and do some fundraising and connect people together so yeah. these are all businesses in this area that you can communicate with and um, so it's just really good to see what's going on in that community and um, you can also we'll come back to it in a bit but you can use the search box and just put the word mountain in um, and it will also come up with different options of um, community groups and things that are going on in Moncton that haven't necessarily used the hashtag but because of their geolocation mm -hmm. obviously you set yours as Manchester earlier yes but you could also set that as Moncton so it will nice. show you things that are local to you okay so we've gone over what hashtags we should use so we've also gone over using popular hashtags and um, hashtags can also help for trending. So trending is the next thing that we were asked quite a lot of. What does trending mean? What's trending? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to explain a little bit more to you, Karen, about yes. what trending is, because um, I think that would be quite helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. I can assure you it's very difficult to get something to trend. Yeah. You really need to have that hook and really have that emotion connection, emotional connection there. So it's often good to, to maybe use a hashtag that's well established. Right. As in, if you were doing some influencer outreach um, or if, if I was working with some influencers in my job and I was wanting to talk to people about wine, it might be handy to use Wine Wednesday on a Wednesday because people are already <laughs> talking about it because right. you've got that thing in common. Okay. So it's often good to use hashtags that are already established like the Bean Co-op one, um, like um, the Co-op way. For instance, at our AGM, our annual general meeting where I met some of you member pioneers, which was... It was really great. Um, we used hashtag co-op AGM and that hashtag trended over that event because so many of our members and member pioneers were using it and everyone was joining in that conversation. But at the same time, you don't necessarily need a hashtag to trend. So I can we can show you um, where you would see what's trending. So if you click into home, I think okay. it's in that one. Yeah. So, on the left hand side, you can see that, no surprise here, we've got general election oh, 17 yeah. that's trending mm -hmm. as we approach the big day, not being political at all there. And then we can also see that um, 
Vardy. Vardy is no, I think he's a footballer. I'm sure cool. somebody told me that. <laughs> so what, what we can do, they're all highlighted in blue, just like your Twitter handle or your hashtag, so you can click on them and it will take you somewhere. So if you wanted to look at um, Jamie Vardy, because <laughs> that one doesn't have a hashtag, um, we can click on that. He is a footballer. He is wow, a footballer. I knew something like that. <laughs> Your football knowledge is obviously much wider <laughs> than mine. So what you can do, if you click onto the latest, you can see what's been going on with, with Jamie recently, um, okay. like you did with the hashtag earlier. Yeah. And oh, he's injured. Always, he's had an accident, oh, so dear. he's injured. So we can see, obviously, that um, the football community is really talking about this on social media mm -hmm. they don't need a hashtag they just need to use his name and the algorithm in twitter will talk about will work out what are the most talked about things on social media yeah. and it will list them down the side here right so trends you can change your trend as well keep tailored the trends if we, we can also look at locations near to you so if we wanted to we could click on to Let's see what's trending in Manchester this evening. So if we click on that, it should then give us <laughs> Manchester trends. So again, another political, political um, yeah. one. You've got Wednesday wisdom that's trending in Manchester. People are obviously feeling very wise. Mm -hmm. um, general election. And then Lauren Child and Jamie there again. So it just depends what's going on in the world at that point. Yeah. You know, if if something happens or if you've got an event in an area and loads of people are talking about it, like the One Love Manchester gig on Sunday, that trended because all of them people were all sharing their experiences at the same time. Yeah. So trending, it's not that, for me, it, trending is great to trend, but it's also important to have um, a conversation that's really relevant. Yes. So if you don't trend, it's not the end of the world. So long as you're having really great conversations with your people, um, and really making a difference in your community. That's what we're sort yeah, of there for. Exactly. So that is trending. If there's any questions for trending at the end, we can go through some of them. I wanted to talk to you about um, direct messages as well, because sometimes you might want to have a conversation with someone before reaching out to them publicly um, on social media. So on Twitter, we can, let's have a look at your followers. Just go in there. If you can just find your followers, so view profile. Okay. And then your followers. So you've oh. got quite a few followers now. You've got 11. <laughs> so if you scroll down and find Jordan, because I know that he's following you. Yes, and then click on profile. You can then, um, there's a button here because you both follow each other. If you don't follow someone, depending on your settings, some people have their settings so someone can send you a direct message even if you're not following them. Right. Um, Jordan's profile, I think you need to follow him before you can send him a, pri a private message. So if you right. click on message because you're both following each other, you yeah. can both then have a conversation that's out of the public arena. Okay, and this so, is why you're saying it's so, not limited in characters So, yeah, as well. so you can write a full okay. essay to Jordan if you wanted to. Um, <laughs> but you could just say, hello. Um, I think Richard isn't too strange to send from a colleague. Hello, <laughs> just trying out DMs. Okay. Cool, and then you can send that to him. And you can also send a, a, a GIF, maybe, or a okay. picture. So and your emojis are there and everything. Oh, Ooh, and oh he's so responding. Send it to him quick before oh. he gets back. So, so Jordan's like, got it. So you can <laughs> see there that, you know, that conversation, it's not going to be on your stream mm -hmm. and it's going to be, um, it's going to be private. So yes. it's really good if you wanted to reach out, say to a food charity and you didn't want to commit to anything until you've got the details confirmed, you could say, really looking forward to working with you. Um, I just need to get a few things confirmed before we can um, talk about this um, in the open on social. So it's a really handy way of putting information over to people um, conveniently without having the whole world seen. So 
that is a direct message. Um, if you can't direct message someone, it's often a, it's it, the easiest way to get them to, to be able to send them a direct message is to ask them to follow you. Yes. So a direct message, you might hear it being called a DM, which is the short version. Um, so well, as I say, direct message, that's where you need to go for your privacy. So we're also going to talk about creating lists. So it's really handy to have lists sometimes so you know and um, you can sort of create a list. So, so for instance, on this profile, for example, I'll show you how to create one in a moment. Up here, Jordan has eight lists. Yeah. He's got one for the co-op. So in this list, you can see that the people in here, Andrew works for the co-op, Cheryl works for the co-op. I think Cheryl's watching today. Hello, Cheryl. <laughs> um, you can see that all of these people, Ben Taylor, these people all work for the co-op. So he's got that community all in the one place. Right. So he's got his co-op community there. Um, and you can also see, if we go back, other lists as well, because Jordan uses his profile for more than just talking to co-op people. So he's got his social media specialists. So it might be that you want schools and scout huts and brownies all put in one queue because they're all very similar. Right. And then you could have another one for food banks and um, food charities. You could then have another one for, I don't know, food colleagues, funeral care colleagues, because obviously we want you all to work together and do a fabulous job, link up in your communities and really make a difference. So there's loads of different things that we can add here um, to make it easy for you when you need to identify people. So okay. there's your lists. I think from all of the questions that were asked, I've tried to keep them all very Twitter to start with. This is the first um, workshop that we're going to do with YouTube live videos. I think the next one we want to do is go over Facebook and give you a whistle stop tour with all of the basics next. So I'm just going to see if we've got any questions. No questions as yet. If you want to comment on the video though, um, at any point, we can, I will always come back and I'll write back to you, which is not a problem. So that is all for what we've got to show you today on Twitter. Mm -hmm. But if there is anything else, you can email us at social at co-op.co.uk and we'll be more than happy to help. Or you can tweet me, um, you can tweet um, co-op UK, you can send us a direct message if you want to communicate with us on Twitter. We're happy to help with anything that you need help with um, and if there's anything else that we can help with, just let us know.